Well, with all this talk of second lockdowns and tiers two and three and goodness knows what, a um, really miserable autumn and winter ahead, who knows how long it could last. Uh, there are some people who are trying to uh, challenge this, even if they're not MPs able to vote against these measures. One of them is the businessman Simon Dolan. He's currently involved in two judicial review bids of government lockdown rules. And one of those cases is being, to, being heard in the High Court tomorrow. Well, let's talk to Simon Dolan now, the businessman who's uh, based in Monaco, now currently speaking to us from France. Good morning to you, Simon. Morning, Julia. Good morning. So, look, you've been involved in two different reviews. Your first one was was thrown out, uh, uh, and uh, the second one, you're now starting the case in court tomorrow. What does this one involve? Yeah, the, the first one was thrown out, but we've appealed against it, so that's now coming up. Uh, the appeal is coming up 29th of October. Tomorrow's is substantially the same kind of appeal as the uh, or the same kind of case as the first one was in so much as we're we're going against or, or uh, challenging the government's authority to be able to do what they've done uh, we say that they're acting outside of their authority and specifically this one tomorrow is a, is an emergency injunction hearing which if we're successful um, it's a very particular one and it will stop the um, restriction the ridic ridiculous strict restrictions on wedding guests only being allowed uh, 15 people so that one is is tomorrow's one. Okay, you, and you're, I think you're working with a uh, an events a wedding and events business, Cripps Barn Group Limited, as well. Of course, they're representing a huge industry that's been absolutely devastated by this. Um, on what basis are you challenging the government's authority? They've got all this uh, these powers anyway. They've got emergency legislation uh, uh, powers. Uh, we, as we've established, they 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 you know even even when they uh, do try and bring in strict rules, uh, they're not getting much challenge in Parliament. Why do you believe they don't have the right? to bring in these restrictions? Well, it's quite complicated, but the, the, the main ones really are is, is that they're acting outside of the law, essentially. So yes, they do have powers under the Public Health Act 1984, that if there is an emergency, they can put through emergency measures um, and they have to be proportionate to the, uh, to the threat that takes place. And you could argue that in March, uh, when people didn't know too much about this thing, that, you know, there was an emergency and OK, they could get away with it. But they've been doing this now for seven months. They have introduced literally hundreds and hundreds of statutory instruments, which are these these things that enable them to get away with it, uh, without any parliamentary scrutiny whatsoever. None, no debate. It's just literally one minister's signature and then it becomes law. And, and we know there's not an emergency anymore. Um, and we know that these these restrictions are massively disproportionate to the threat. So that's the main one. We're also going on the, uh, the uh, European Convention on Human Rights because we've been deprived of education, of, of liberty, of the right to protest, for example. All of these really, really important things. Well, this is it. It's about, I think, a key thing there, as you say, the word proportionate. And that's the issue, isn't it? I, look, I know that you were very much opposed to the lockdown uh, from early stages. I mean, following you on social media, I was very much in favour of the lockdown. I was already in lockdown. I was already ill. But it seemed to me we didn't know what was going on. We had this very deadly threat. And, and, we, and then there was this argument that we needed to build up the capacity of the NHS so we didn't see it overwhelmed, where people, as we saw in northern Italy, were dying because they couldn't get treatment. That's that's eight months ago. Uh, we we passed that moment. Uh, we are seeing growth in the virus again, although many experts pointing out that, well, we would expect that with any virus, any coronavirus or respiratory disease in the autumn as the weather turns cold anyway and as people are moving more and about. Um, I mean, is, do you think there is any sort of end date for any of this? Because a lot of the concerns that are being raised, particularly by backbench Tory MPs right now, is that this is kind of forever, that there is no exit strategy other than a vaccine. No one serious thinks we're going to have the whole country vaccinated even by the end of next year. We are looking at a whole another year of these restrictions. Can, can you see a point at which this government or indeed any government has powers to control people's lives and then says, here you go, we're relinquishing all those powers again? Is, is that your big fear that they're going to try and keep those powers forever? It's been my fear from the start. And, and I get your point, Julia, about the, uh, you know, there maybe was a rationale for lockdown right at the very start for perhaps a couple of weeks to protect the NHS, which was bear in mind what we were told. But governments never, ever give up power. Once they have power, they take a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And this is the this is the problem with these, uh, you know, it's just, it's just a lockdown for two weeks. It's just to protect your neighbor. It's just to protect the elderly. It's just the mask. It's just this, it's just that, you know, you have all these justs and in the end you wake up one morning, you're locked in your house. You haven't got a job anymore. You can't visit your elderly parents. 
you, you can't do anything that actually makes life enjoyable. Unless apparently you want to go on a grouse shoot or you're celebrating Arsene Wenger's whatever yes. it was. It would appear. A lot of people might ask, and I did mention at the beginning, you, know, you do live in Monaco, and, and right now you're speaking to us from France, so they've got some pretty drastic uh, restrictions as well. Why do you care what the British government is doing in Britain when you don't even live here anymore? Because I care about people who live in Britain. Now, it might, you know, people go, oh, yeah, of course he does. It's really got nothing to do with my businesses per se. You know, yeah, I made a lot of money. I'm very lucky. I still have the businesses running. I employ a lot of people, all those things. But I'm, I'll be fine. But I see young kids who are now entering university. But of course, they're not entering university. They're just locked down in halls of residence and sitting looking at a computer like we're doing now. I see young people who used to have jobs who now haven't got jobs anymore. You see whole industries that are being wiped out, the hospitality in industries, you know, entertainment industries. Uh, I did a documentary uh, the other day with a comedian. You know, all the arts is being wiped out. Uh, and for what? For no reason whatsoever. So I care really passionately about arts uh, and about enjoyment and about enjoying life. And I also care passionately about business. You know, it's what I, it's what I do. It's what I enjoy. Yeah. I love it. And I, I know how hard it is to build a business up. And when you see so many thousands of, of businesses that are just being literally put out of business through no fault of their own. I've got a guy who messages me. Uh, he's been running a pub for the last 50 years. He's 70 now and he's wiped out. He's got nothing anymore. Yeah, there are going to be a lot more of those. Simon, Simon's against us, but just uh, finally, briefly, if you would, I know you've also been uh, filming a documentary in Sweden. You've been there. And of course, they've followed a very, very different route from us. Um, currently, I think they're, well, not I think, I know, their average daily deaths right now is one. It's a smaller country than us, but nevertheless, it's one a day. Uh, they have never followed down the, the, the very strict lockdown route. Is that the route that you would like us to take? It's the route that we should have taken right from the very start, easy with hindsight, but let's face it, that was the route that Boris wanted to go down and Valence and Witty both said about herd immunity. Uh, and Sweden got it right, you know, and I don't know why people are just putting their head in the sand and, okay. and trying to make excuses to say that it doesn't work. It does, I've been there, it's beautiful. Everything's back to normal. They have a life now, you know?